everyone. Thank you for watching. Uh, today we have Dr. Andre Hines from Chiropractic Injury Clinics. Dr. Hines, could you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Hello, my name is Dr. Andre. That's what everybody called me. Uh, I am what people call a biohacking chiropractor, which is I love using technology to enhance on the human experience. A lot of chiropractors have certain focuses such as, you know, injuries or uh, wellness or something like that. We kind of take it all and put it together and we make it make sense. So we work with a lot of MDs, we work with nurses and we try to bridge the gap and kind of do what like a lot of the other doctors do in other countries, which is they have multiple individuals with different specialties looking at the same person. And then they create a, a, a treatment plan that actually is completely patient centered. So, uh, so what, what got you into the industry? Wow. It, so what got me into chiropractic was a gentleman who uh, was headed to chiropractic school that actually told me I was not smart enough mm. to go to chiropractic. And I started, I don't know, 2003, and I started looking up chiropractors and what they did. I was like, that sounds fun. So I literally went off a of sheer dare. I never had like any experience. I've never been adjusted. And within, I think maybe like well, six months of me being in school, my mom died of a complication from the medication she was on from her medical doc at 46 years old. So I took off almost two months of school. And then when I came back, I had so many teachers and faculty that was engaged in trying to help me finish because they would say, well, you know, everybody kept saying, you know, don't quit now. You just started. And it was a professor by the name of uh, Dr. Bassano from New York. And uh, he came up to me in the comments. I was in the, in the common area. Everyone else was in class. And I was, this was in California. So I was sitting there crying, you know, because mm -hmm. I just, you know, every time you got, you, had, you had to go through the, uh, the gross anatomy, the cadaver classes with mm -hmm. dead bodies on the table and dissect mm -hmm. them. And I, I remember debating on whether or not I was going to go into the class or I was going to quit because I had to still do this. Mm -hmm. This was a major part of your grade. And then uh, Dr. Bassano came up to me and said, you know, I, I'm sorry. I heard about what happened, but he said it very rough because he's from New York. He said, um, you're, you're I, you know, I hear about what happened to your mom, but at this point you can't help your mom, but mm -hmm. you can help other people's moms. Mm -hmm. And so, and then he walks off and I was like, man, this is the most insensitive person I ever met in my life. He just, you know, he like, but then it clicked. You get a chance to recharge the battery of another human being. Wow. It's more than just the pain because all the pain starts in the brain. Mm. So what would you say is the worst part about working in chiropractic? I think the, the worst part uh, is the public, I ain't gonna say public perception, Mm -hmm. Because I don't know what every 400 million person actually think about chiropractic. Mm -hmm. But I think what it is, is the public perception is that uh, chiropractors are quacks. Mm -hmm. And uh, because you're doing something different than what their mainstream doctors are doing. So often I wonder what would have happened if everything was in reverse. Mm -hmm. If chiropractors came first, which in reality it did. But it wasn't, we didn't do a good job at marketing ourselves. Because there are some chiropractors who are quacks. Like mm -hmm. you, and when I mean quack, I mean that they're so out there that what you're coming in for, you're not ready for that yet. Is it mm -hmm. true that, you know, you yeah. can affect meridians and things of that, that nature? Yes, that's true. But as a patient, I got neck pain. I'm not necessarily coming in to, to hear about your how you can help my meridians. I'm really here to, to help get help my, my uh, neck pain. So what happens is, uh, there is a uh, uh, paradigm shift mm. that happens in so many offices. Mm. Well, in American culture, we don't necessarily have the same amount of exposure mm -hmm. to all the different elements of the healing spectrum. We only have it from like the allopathic model. And the allopathic model teaches in a very mechanistic type of way. Mm -hmm. So we get, mm -hmm. we get trained mentally, that, mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, your brain it's going to send pain and you have this pain. So if you have pain for a long time, let's fix the problem. Very like a mechanic would do. Okay. So that's pretty, I, I think that uh, now that's quacks in medical. And I'm, I've lost a lot of people from, in our family from, you know, abnormal reactions, prescription drugs and medications, botched surgeries, 
trans, you know, uh, botched transfusions, infection yeah. in the hospital. We, we've, I've lost a lot of people. Yeah. But does that mean that all medical doctors are quacks? No. But when I grew up in the projects, a kid threw a mirror across the playground, wow. and the, the mirror wow. hits me right over my above my knee, cuts my quadricep tendon. I was eight years old, cut my quadricep tendon completely in half. I stayed on the ground for two hours because in the projects, the, the, the ambulance never, they didn't come to the projects. Oh. So a police officer comes in and, uh, and wraps my leg with some gauze and takes me to the hospital. So that's why, you know, I have different experiences with police officers. I have mm -hmm. different experiences with everything. So everything that we do in life is based on our experiences. It's almost like there's the natural and then there's the mechanical kind of elements of, of medicine that you deal with. Crazy part about it is that they're not separate. Mm. And I think in our country, we think they're separate, but you have a mechanical body that moves. We know this, mm -hmm. but there's a, there's something that in, inside of us, uh, like in, in the Arabic word, they, they talk about, they use the word like nafsi or like a uh, ilm, like that, mm -hmm. or your uh, nur, like your light, that soul. In, in medicine, they, we working on that mechanical portion and chiropractic working on the mechanical portion also, but there is a mm -hmm. deep spiritual connection. That wow. is what's controlling. Because, like, if you look at a dead body and a living body, a person could just die. You cannot really tell the difference, other than the fact that one is not breathing. Mm -hmm. But, but you know that the light is is not there. Mm -hmm. So, so which demographic would you say is the hardest to connect with? Which, I guess, age demographic would you say is the hardest to connect with, and why do you think they are? I think it's it's, it's definitely two different demographics. Uh, the one, I think. We call it the millennials. Like my generation, okay. still, I still consider millennial. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, I'm actually still a millennial. <laughs> I barely made it. Um, I think I, so. Mm -hmm. Our generation, everything is about fast, fast, fast. Mm -hmm. And so we're. And then there's another generation of people who may have heard something that heard something. We call it the, the I don't know generation, because they, they say, uh, mm -hmm. oh, "I don't believe in chiropractic," and you ask them why not, they're going to say, "I don't know." Mm -hmm. And so that's the worst when you make decisions with no information. Um, there's a lot of people who do that, and they don't really know what chiropractic. In the older generation, once people, some people make it past like 60, mm -hmm. they start, they switch a different mode. Some, some, I'm not going to say all, which is, we all going to die someday. I'm going to die anyway. I don't want to live that. Now I've talked to people who are 85 mm -hmm. years old who still walking on the trail. Like I can show you this this trail right here. You'll see people in their 70s and 80s still walking. Because they want to be around, mm -hmm. but there's some people they say I don't want to I don't want to live to 100 years old, wow. like because the idea of aging wow. is like I'm, I don't want to be have somebody help me to the bathroom. Oh. I don't want to be on a walker and wheelchair. It's it's a portion of the baby boomers and it's mm -hmm. a portion of the millennials. Interesting. So I'm so Dan Kennedy is a strategic marketing coach, and he says that businesses. Uh, struggle in only a few areas. He says it's either money, time, people, or passion. So in chiropractic, which would you say is the biggest struggle and why? Time and money. Time, time and, money. and money. Okay, why? Because uh, a lot of chiropractors are filled with passion, but, uh, mm -hmm. but they don't really teach us in, in chiropractic school like the, the healthcare business. Uh, outside of work, how would your family and friends describe you? Rain man. Uh, as Raymond, because I haven't watched TV in almost seven years. Uh, we don't have own a TV, so I do I do a lot of reading, and I do watch documentaries. So I, I may I do that on my I do that on my computer. So I guess that's kind of like watching TV. But <laughs> I am a I am a, a junkie when it comes to like documentaries and stuff like that. So I like talking about the world and what we see and experience. And I like I'm I'm considered a hippie to some of my friends. So they they want me to engage in conversations about Facebook and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's kind of boring to me. So I, I like talking about, you know, hey, do you notice the sky, how different it looks than it was when we were a kid? So whatever it is, mm -hmm. I think that, uh, like, even my, my wife, she always says, hey, look, we about to go to this meeting. Just so you know, <laughs> we, only, we only got 15 minutes. So please, please, please don't start talking. And and I, and I would get, like, these uh these tiny nut. Uh, you know, we got to go because, you know, I, I like to talk because mm -hmm. I, I people don't like to talk anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm the person that will actually call you on the phone and I'll get mad if you don't answer. 
like I guess I get so like distraught when I saw I know when people tell me about videos of people that record somebody in trouble. Mm, and they just record they won't put, it. And they won't put their phone down and they say somebody somebody call nine one one. It's easy for them like to hang stop the video and call nine one. But it's just what I realize is that that's become acceptable because mm. everyone's about the grind and everyone's about doing me and stay in your lane. And I don't, I don't really know many successful people who did it truly a hundred percent by themselves. Mm-mm. So what are really you, what are you passionate about? What gets you up in the morning? This life, you know, like I give, like I don't sleep a lot. A lot of people probably think I'm, I'm on drugs, but I probably sleep three hours. I know people say you should supposed to sleep eight hours and all this type of stuff. And I, and I, and I, I can't, tell you any truly like inspired people that's inspired by leaving legacy who sleep a lot. Yeah. You know, so uh, what would you say is your long-term goal? Like you've done all this, you're successful, you have a family, you have multiple practice locations. What's next? What's your long-term goal? To die tired. Mm. Cause I, I, cause sometimes I feel like, cause when I, if I go to bed and I'm not tired, I feel like it was, I feel like I wasted the day. Mm-hmm. Like I don't feel like I did enough. Yeah. Like, I, you know, I have a, my son is uh, four years old and one, uh, one day he was like, daddy, I want to be a chiropractor. And, and I was just so perplexed. I'm like, I don't, you know, all the things he sees, like he's, you know, you know, at least he has these books with fireman and stuff like that. We don't give him materials about chiropractor. But he said, I want to be a chiropractor. And then my, my wife said, well, what's, what does a chiropractor do? And he says, paint, Paint, mm. and then we, and I go back and I realize my son is on. He's, he's when he's in the office, he's usually watching me painting. A lot of people say, if your kid was to grow up and be the same thing with you, would you want them? Like there's some people say, I wouldn't want my son to play football. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't want my son yeah. to be an actor. I wouldn't want my son or daughter to be. Obviously, you want your kid to be whatever they can be, not what they can be, but whatever they want to be. Mm-hmm. But if my son decided to become a chiropractor, I want to make sure that when I leave, I've left chiropractic. Better than better. Like it, but it was. Yeah, I feel like this it was just it was such a beautiful interview because it really you know it it isn't something that you can condense into a twenty minute office visit. You know what I mean? It's I mean, yeah. thank you so much I, for for I interviewing it. with me. Well, I, most of the time I have to calm myself down, so I actually have my team to help help me with my 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 exams because the, the, I would end up talking to patients two or three hours because. Mm. When somebody telling you was sharing pain, right? Mm-hmm. The, it obviously we know that the pain is coming from the brain. So now what I'm trying to find out is what are they thinking about this pain, mm. and what are they and what are they thinking this pain is going to be able to is, is, is going to stop them from doing. Like every patient story now I can use that same story to relate to another person, mm-hmm. and so every patient actually. The doctor's not necessarily helping the patient. The patient's really helping themselves. themselves. The doctor's a facilitator. Wow. Wow. The patient actually does more to help another patient wow. than they do that doctor can help a patient. I know it sounds weird. Yeah. Because when a patient tells you something, the doctor is learning too. Even though we learn all this stuff in school, but you can see like and maybe some, like the reason that you would do a treatment over and over again is because you're seeing a result from it, right? Mm-hmm. The result is coming from the patient's doing better. So if the patient is actually doing better and you use a treatment, like, you know what? I'm gonna try this technique on you. And if I try the technique on you and you have a massive migraine and it helps your migraine, go away. Next patient comes in with a migraine and, it, and you trying your traditional treatment is not working. You're going to remember the story or the, the case that you had. Mm-hmm. You did this different treatment. As you said, that patient helped the other patient mm-hmm. because if that patient had a, a negative response or a negative uh, feedback to their treatment, you probably won't do it on a new patient. But because they had a positive uh, experience with that, then you would do that treatment on another patient. And then, so that patient is actually helping other patients. Other patients, wow. It seems like you really understand the art of chiropractic, which is beautiful. Where can viewers find you? Like, where can they learn about you? I'm on, I'm on LinkedIn as Dr. Andre Hines. Uh, I'm on Instagram, Instagram. as uh, Dr. Dre, the chiropractor. Okay. And also our, web, our website, chiropracticinjuryclinics with an S, dot com. Okay, so Chiropractic Injury Clinics of America. Well, thank you so much for doing this interview. (laughs) No problem.